then property plan and equipment we're going to continue with uh, the part two of the topic okay in part one we already covered the definition recognition measurement uh, which include only initial management so in part two today we're going to continue with subsequent measurement we're going to to de-recognition and also disclosure. Okay. For subsequent measurement, let's get to an example. In 2015, ACDC Berhad acquired a property in Sepang at cost of 4 million. The useful life is estimated to be 25 years with no residual However, due to rapid development in the area, the fair value of property at the year end of 2015 was identified to 8 million. So there is an increase in price from 4 million to 8 million. We are talking about property here. Okay, so should ECDC recognize the property at the new value 8 million or should ACDC keep it at 4 million? According to MFRS 116, the entity can select cost model that is keep it at 4 million or use the revaluation model that is recorded it at the new million okay so uh, FRS 116 allow the entity to either choose the cost model or revaluation model an entity shall choose either the cost model or revaluation model as its accounting policy and shall apply the policy to an entire class of property plan and equipment okay for example if the company has two property property a and property b okay the company need to apply if the company choose to use revaluation model the company need to apply the, the revaluation model for property A and also property B. Is that an entire class of P? So if the company apply cost model, then how they should record it? After recognition as an asset, an item of property, plant and equipment shall be carried at its cost, okay, less any accumulated depreciation and any accumulated impairment loss. On the other hand, if they use revaluation model, after recognition as an asset, an item of property, plant and equipment whose fair value can be measured reliably shall be carried at revalued amount. Okay, so if the company applies a revision model, the company can have the value of the property at the long. Okay, let's subsequent depreciation and civil economic impairment loss. We actually record revaluation. Okay, first you need to identify whether the PPE to be revalued is non depreciable PPE, which means that you don't calculate depreciation for this PPE, or the PPE is a depreciable PPE. Then you compare the carrying amount okay, of the PPE with the fair value at the date of depreciation. Okay, comparison must be on the same date which means that the fair value you have it for 1st January then the fair value you have is 31st December then your carrying value the value on 31st December as well 
So when you compare carry value with fair value, if you have fair value more than the carry value, then you are said to have a plus. However, if value is more than the re than the re value, if we say Here we have x, y, z, berhad. Acquire a land. Okay, land, you don't calculate depreciation. Okay, acquire a land on 1st January 2015 for 1 million. On, November, on 1st November 2020, x, y, z, berhad decide to revalue the land to its fair value of 1.2 million. Okay, so how do we actually account for it? Okay, so we can since uh, this is non depreciable PPE, so we can compare straight away the amount of one million and the carrying value compare with fair value of one point two million. So we have fair value. More than carrying value giving rise to a surplus of 200,000. So, if you have a surplus of 200,000, then what you should do, you should debit your PPE 200,000, credit your asset revaluation reserve. You can see that your PPE 200,000 actually for that, you add the 2,000 to your value. Okay, so if you look at in terms of T, when you complete the journey entry, you can see that the land okay, will be carried down value will be carried down at the fair value of 1.2 million. So this is actually the fair value. Do revalue the amount. We want to show uh, the our we, we want the we want our PPE to be recorded at. Okay, so as you know, when you prepare your financial statement, PPE will uh, will prepare information PPE in detail in the notes too. So it will be. Uh, uh, you actually take into consideration the surplus amount. Okay, the balance is at 1st January 2020, 1 million. Okay, if you have surplus, then the amount added to the balance, giving you a new balance of 1.2 million. Okay, so this is a condition where you have undepreciable PPE in situation where you have surplus. Let's proceed with another example. Example number two. Okay, just looking at number PP, <clears throat> we use a, a similar example as example one. However, we change the fair value to be 900,000. So you can see that uh, land is acquired at 1st January 2015 at a value of 2 million. On 1st November 2020, Edward decided to revalue the land to its fair value. This time, the fair value is 900,000. So, there's a difference between example 2 and also example 1. <coughs> okay, the process is the same way. Since it is a Depreciable PPE, you can straight compare the carry value of 1 million. Okay, straight compare meaning that you don't need to find the accumulated. So we compare carry value 1 million with the fair value 900,000. In example 2, this time we have the carrying value more than the which gives rise to the Deficit of one thousand. So, so this is a so that is a different that I 
one illustratory example one and example two. Example one we have surplus. Example two we have deficit. Let's see what friends in terms of general entry. For general entry, if you have a deficit, you need to debit the amount of loss. The deficit amount one hundred. And credit your PPE 100. So you can see here if you have a surplus, you debit E. But if you have your deficit, you credit your PPE. To assist you, remember it badly, it will be easier for you to use the T account. Okay, why is it easier to use the account? Because balance BD and balance CD for Set is fixed. Okay, for a set balance BD on side and CD is on the credit side. So you can see that in order for you to get the uh, land to be as its fair value nine hundred thousand from balance the T account, you can see that the will be on the credit. Okay, it will be on the credit side. Okay, so that's how we get credit, debit, statement of profit or loss. So, we need that if you uh, lupa you punya journal entry, you should use your account to assist you in recall journal entry for surplus and deficit. Okay, uh, and in terms of notes, to be what's different here, if you have surplus, it will be minus from your balance okay. minus so that your balance is now reduced to its fair value of nine hundred thousand so in here uh between plus and deficit the process is the same however uh whether you deficit or surplus depending on what is fair value okay so, you letak je fair value as your balance CD, then you boleh tengok sama ada deficit or surplus from. Okay, so kalau surplus, mesti asset you bertambah nilai. But say, asset you akan berkurang nilai. So, that is example 1, example 2. I look into non-depreciable PPE, which is very straightforward. Then let's move on further. This time, let's look at depreciable PPE. If you have depreciable PPE, then you need to uh, have your accumulated depreciation first. Okay. In this case, we have XYZ Berhad acquired a building on 1st January 2010 for 120,000. Estimated useful life of the building is 10 years. The company depreciates its building on a straight method. Okay, on 1st January 2015, XYZ Berhad decided to revalue the building to its fair value of 75000 Okay, so the process will be, okay, remember the process of you need to identify the depreciable PPE or non-depreciable PPE. Okay. Uh, example 3 is given as depreciable PPE. So, if you have depreciable PPE, then you need to find your carrying value which comes from cost minus accumulated depreciation. So, our is 120,000 minus accumulated depreciation. We want accumulated depreciation. Okay, so yearly depreciation will be 120,000. 20,000 divided with 10 years. Okay, so you have 120,000 divided years. You have 12,000 per year. Multiply with 5 years. So how did I get 5 years? Because uh, 10 is 1st January, right? So you have 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so it's actually 5 years. Okay, you are looking for the carrying value on 1st. January. So, what is the uh, carrying value? You get the carrying value to 60,000. Fair value is 75. 
represent this uh, so in here we have a value more than the carrying value giving you a surplus of 50,000 okay so what will be the entry okay so uh, uh for PE when it's involved uh, the depreciation there at there are two options uh, method to record revaluation Okay, it is stated in the textbook, the Tan Leong Tong textbook method one and two. However, for uh, FER for what is commonly practiced is for us to use the method two, where we are going to eliminate the accumulated depreciation. So, if we did to eliminate accumulated depreciation, we are going to debit accumulated depreciation six. Million, how do we? What is the amount of this 60 million? Okay, 60 million is this. Okay, you get from here the accumulated depreciation is 60 million from this. So you debit your accumulation, you credit your PP amount. Why do you do that? You want to eliminate accumulated depreciation calculated. Old value, so you can see from here is the old value, right? This is old value. So we debit and then, okay, after you eliminate, you the record of revaluation. You have surplus, you go to debit your 15,000, you credit your uh, set revaluation reserve, also 5,000. So you can see the journal entry for coding surplus is actually similar, either it's depreciable or non depreciable PPE. It's just that if you have depreciable, you need to accumulate depreciation in order for you to find your carry value. Okay. In example three, you should realize that. Okay, we have the revaluation at the beginning of the year that is on 1st January 2015. So what we have, since the revaluation happened at the beginning of the year, don't forget that the depreciation will be then calculated using new fair value. Don't forget, uh, you in this example 3, you have done the revalue. Okay, you re revalue our Okay, to record your uh, PPE value of 70,000. So, uh, you need the addition for that year as well. So, when you calculate your depreciation for January 2, to December, the calculation of depreciation will be based on the new value. Okay, so it will be based on the new value. And don't by five years, why is five years? You have estimated useful years, but you already use the asset for five years. This five years is the remaining years. Okay, so from, from the calculation, you get the uh, the new utilization amount that is 15,000. The uh, that you're going to use is the regular for depreciation. Okay. Move uh, on to the okay. lecture. The always assists you to get your journal entry. So remember, this is a set account. Okay, we have a debit button to start with uh, the value before, before revaluation and 20,000. Okay, so this one is already uh, in the account. And accumulated depreciation on January 1st, 2015 also recorded at 60,000. So how you should follow uh, the, uh, my ledger account here? You just follow the number. What you should do first is according to the number. Okay, for example, and then and 60,000 is the opening balance. So, what you should do is record to find value. You 
debit ya amortization ya okey debit accumulated depreciation and the credit ya building macam okey kita so next this is not free but this is how you get your surplus of deficit you letak a uh, uh, new value okey tak new value nombor 3 so fair value uh, akan Sisi letak sebagai balance CD Tak ada harga dia rendah Ataupun harga dia rendah Atau tinggi Just put it as balance CD So when you put it as balance C Nombor 2 ada nombor 3 ada Then you balance it off Okay The debit and the credit side Nombor 4 And balance it off You realize that you can ada Nilai the difference On dari side. Okay, so dengan uh, from the T account, automatically you will get surplus. You nampak dia surplus, nampak dia sebelah dia. Okay, ataupun bila balance of nombor 4, you pun dapat balance figure sebelah kredit. So, kali dapat sebelah kredit, dia akan jadi deficit. Okay, sebab tu saya suka guna T account because okay, actually you just use the balancing process to find your surplus or deficit. Okay, then number 5, then you go to number 6. Discuss that depreciation will be calculated on new value. So, you tengok ke sini. Lepas you transfer 60,000, okay, you charge depreciation based on the new value, 15,000. You realize the accumulated depreciation Ya, nombor tujuh ni tinggal dengan yang baru sahaja. 15,000. So, that what is number two. Eliminating data depreciation based on the old value. Kita keluarkan uh, 60,000 daripada PTE yang lama. Bukan dulu. So, yang baki yang tinggal dalam dalam depreciation you adalah based on fair value. So this is your GP. Okay, how do you transfer a current page to your cost? Okay, so basically, if you look close, uh, you know, so PP is a transformation of your ledger account. Okay, it's just that a note to PP is given in your financial statement, dalam published financial statement. So, you tak boleh lah bagang because everybody understand how to read the T account. So, we put in term dia macam estimation kan balance as at 1st January instead of let's be D. Semua tahu is balance B and balance C D. So, that is example I have one more example to give you some differences. Look at example four. In this time, we have two similar uh, question. We have Isaac Berhad acquire a building first in 2010 for 120,000. The estimated useful life of the recent years. And the company did on a straight line method. So, kalau you tengok sampai sini, is the same example 3. For example 4. Okay, we have the revaluation on 31st December 2015. It is to value the building to its fair value of 55,000. So the difference between example 4 and example 3 is the evaluation date. Example 3 value our tahun. First January. Example 4, we have revision on 31st December. So, suggested solution is the same process. Okay, this is depreciable. You get the value which is Cost accumulated depreciation. Okay. Uh, we have 120 cost 
The difference is if you have revaluation at the end of the year as compared to example three. Example three previously we multiply it with five years we have 2010, 2011, 2012, 13, 14, limited. And we have one year for two. 2015. That's why for income related decision, not first, but it's a total of six, six years. Can so you have 2010, 31st December 2015. So because of that, income related decision is no longer 60,000 as for example, three, but it will be 72,000. Kenapa? Sebab tak revalue yang berbeza Okay But uh, cara you buat sama You masih compare carrying value with the fair value Cuma nilai fair value tu akan berubah Sebab apa? Sebab dalam perkiraan carrying value You perlu kira cost minus accumulated depreciation Yang merubah uh, uh, Itu merupa itu merubah jumlah accumulator di sini. In this case, you compare fair value with the carry, but still have plus and minus. However, your surplus is less than is seven thousand. So uh, the general entry will be slightly different. How is it? If you compare example four, example four, four you mean first. Because it start at the beginning of the year. However, example four, you tunggu setahun kan? So during the year, you need to take depreciation dulu sebelum kira depreciation. Okay, why is that? Because uh, depreciation happened at the end of the year. So you need the depreciation, credit accumulated depreciation, so you see that you're going to charge your depreciation at O value. Okay, pada hal yang belum revalue lah. Because you need to revalue at the end of the year. Then you're going to eliminate the depreciation. Um, it will be 72,000. And the rest of the journal entry is similar to example 4. Yes. So you look at uh, between example one, two, three. You see that basically the journal entry is the same. Okay, for example, first you have PPE, credit, AR, ARR, asset, revaluation. You have deficit, you have SOP, you have your PPE. Okay, uh, the journal entry is the same. The difference is the amount. Okay, yang you keep the line here. Okay, so penggeraan tu uh, based I just read in several example. Okay, so we have uh, so we have revaluation at the end of the year. The numbering of the process change. Okay, uh, uh, opening balance for 120 opening balance for accumulated is uh, 60. The first thing that since the revaluation happened at the end of the year, you can hear the precision dulu. That's why you can know debit depreciation, the credit accumulated depreciation. And to do next, okay, you're going to transfer, uh, you're going to eliminate the based on old values. So, number tiga, number dua, and number tiga. And then, yeah, the process will continue the same. Dia adalah kalau kita depreciation dulu, so dia revalue akhir tahun. You can see that the current year closing balance for depreciation dia kong lah. So, kita tidak eliminate semua based on the value. Okay, so in here, you can see how do we actually, this is the 
this is where you have the to show that you get 72,000 for your revaluation. Okay, move on to the next. Okay, we take our FAR 10 June 2019 for example 5. To how Barra acquire a piece of land costing 1.2 million during the year 2018, the land is an appreciable asset and the business use region method to account for its land. The fair value of the land on 31st December 2018 was 8.5 million. Requirement of the question briefly explain accounting treatment for Sit on revaluation, including the journal entry on acquisition of the land on the 2018. Okay, so if question closely, the question asks you the theory but first, where the question asks you to briefly explain the counting tricks of the first and deficit on revaluation. Okay, so it's Focusing on status or the deficit of how your aggression is asking for uh, the, the, the general knowledge on evaluation. So, your answer should be explanation on how you treat status and also deficit. I give you just a solution that you in answer uh, this uh, similar question. Depends on revaluation will be treated as the set and revaluation uh, re reserve in the statement of financial position. It is uh, treated as a set because we debit to our PPE and when we credit our revaluation reserve, then it will appear in your statement of change in equity and the sum of uh, all the reserve will appear in your statement of financial position. Okay. On the other hand, deficit on revaluation will be treated as other expenses in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. Okay, so that is the theory uh, part of June 2018. How about the journal entry? Same process. We identify whether it is depreciable or non-depreciable PPE. In this case, land is non-depreciable PPE. Okay, therefore, we compare carrying value 1.2 million with fair value 1.5 million. We have fair value more than the carrying value, giving us a surplus of 300,000. So you apply the journal entry as given to you in example. One. Okay, debit PPE, uh, credit bank or payable. You do this for June 2019. Why? Because uh, you acquired the land also in 2018. Okay, and you revalue ahead tahun 2018. So for this question sahaja, based on the question given, you kena juga ada jenis entry untuk uh, acquisition of PPE because <coughs> the uh, question state journey entry on the acquisition and revaluation of the land uh, on 31st December. Okay. So that is for revaluation. Uh, as a requirement of FAR 410, okay, this is the first time of you learn the revaluation model. For FAR 410, you are doing revaluation for first time revaluation. Because as you move on further to FAR 460 onwards, there will also be a situation where you're going to revalue your PPE for the second time, third time onwards. In that situation, we're going to have uh, some other uh Several other factors that you need to consider if you have surplus and deficit. Just keep that in mind that uh, the journal entry 
that you have in FAR 410 will have a slight changes if you have a situation of second time revaluation, uh, second time and onwards, meaning that second time, third time onwards revaluation, then you need to look at uh, some other requirements. Okay, so we have done uh, our part on subsequent measurement looking at revaluation model. So we, we move on to the next part of F MFRS 116, the recognition of set. Okay, uh, when you first start your MFRS 116, we start with recognition. Recognition. Recognition means that daripada tak ada, kita nak recognize dia dari, uh, menjadi a set. When we talk about the recognition is the opposite of the process daripada kita ada a set tu, we going to de-recognize maknanya tiadakan dia. Okay, so you have a situation where if you want to do the recognition of a set, the carrying amount of an item of PPE shall be de-recognized on disposal. Betul lah kan? Bila dispose, tak adalah a set. Itu lagi. Or when no future economic benefit are expected from it, use or disposal. Maknanya, ataupun kalau you tak jual pun, a set tu dah tak boleh nak guna, uh, you don't have any future economic benefit. So, if you have that kind of citation, you need to de-recognize also. Dah tak boleh tunjuk uh, sebagai asset dalam you punya account. Okay. So, any gain or loss arising from the de-recognition of an item of PPE shall be included in statement of profit or loss when the item is de-recognized. So, uh, when you dispose or you de-recognize, you may have gain or loss. So, the amount will be recorded in statement of profit or loss. Okay, gain shall not be classified as revenue because it is not the main revenue from the ordinary activities of the business. Okay, we take examples uh, from December 2015. Okay, example 6, this question, you already complete the uh, first part of it. Okay, you already calculate the initial cost. You already consider the... Uh, <clears throat> the upgrade amount, okay, you already calculate the depreciation. Okay, so we proceed to the uh, de-recognition of PPE. So, uh, in order for you to find the calculation, you should refer to the exercise that you already complete in part 1. Okay, so in here, we just focusing on the de-recognition part. Okay, where uh, assume after five years, a forklift truck was sold for 88,000 cash. Prepare the journal entry to record the de-recognition of the forklift. Okay, so how should we uh, look into this example? Okay. Okay, I enlarge. Okay, so this is uh, what you have done earlier. You already calculate the total cost of forklift to be 158,300 coming from where? The initial cost that you already calculate. Uh, we have plus replace, replacement cost. And from there also, you already calculate your annual depreciation. Okay. <coughs> So, giving you a scenario because the de-recognition de happened after 5 years. Okay, so after 5 years, we have the year of 2018. Okay, so beginning of after 5 years is uh, 1st January 2018 where you have the opening balance 158,300 is already an opening balance sebab apa? sebab you dah record dia punya acquisition 5 tahun dulu so sekarang it keep as opening balance your accumulated depreciation also be opening balance of 53,200 how do I get 53,200? that is for period of 4 years 
Okay, sebab saya nak tunjuk apa yang berlaku for the current year. Okay, and during the current year, you calculate the your depreciation of 13,300. So, in order for you to de-recognize your PPE, what you going to do is, kita kena tutup all the uh, related account lah, that what is meant by de-recognize. Kalau daripada ada, kita nak tiadakan. In this case, kita ada account PPE, so account PPE need to be closed. Accumulated depreciation uh, related to the fault cliff also need to be closed. So, how do we close Okay, uh, how do we close account for accumulated depreciation? Of course. Okay, we go to uh, PPE first. How do we close account for PPE? Okay, at the end of the year, 31st December, we need to use another account that is known as disposal account. So, how do you close? You transfer the amount of PPE to your disposal account. So I put that step one. Okay, How, what is the amount that you transfer? The full amount lah barulah you punya account is close. Okay. So credit PPE. You're going to debit your disposal. Okay, please. Okay. Uh, same amount, one five eight three hundred. Okay, so that is what you do. Uh, firstly, that is part your, of your journal entry where you debit. Disposal. Sebenarnya kalau ikutkan uh, the one that we did in our journal entry is actually starting from credit PPE. Baru you nampak sebab the idea is kita nak tutup account PPE. So in order for you to tutup account PPE, you credit PPE. But when you prepare your journal entry, kita kena letak debit dulu baru credit. So in order for you to understand your journal entry, it will be much easier if you understand your T account or your ledger. Okay, one five eight three hundred. You credit your PPE. In this question, it will be for cliff. Same amount one five eight three hundred. Okay, so that is the first journey entry. Next, uh, you can see from, okay, you can see from here, your PPE account is already closed. Debit 158300, credit 158300. Okay, now move on to accumulated depreciation. Okay, so make sure uh, you are the accumulated depreciation terkini pada tarikh you nak dispose. So, if you dispose at the end of the year, maknanya you kena kira lah dia punya uh, depreciation untuk tahun tersebut. Kalau dia dispose awal tahun, tak payahlah terus ambil the four year amount. So, in this case, you get a total amount that you're going to transfer to your disposal account. Okay, which is the amount of tutup juga 66,500 then it will be in your disposal account okay 66,500 okay so <clears throat> your journal entry will be okay this one depend on uh, the date Ya, yeah, sama macam revaluation tadi. Kalau you revalue akhir, uh, sorry. Kalau you dispose akhir tahun yang memerlukan you kira dulu depreciation, then you need to debit your depreciation, uh, credit your accumulated depreciation. So, in this case, that what you have done. Okay. Dia tengok tarikh. 
Hello you uh, Direcognize dia awal tahun Maknanya you tak perlu kira uh, Current year depreciation So yang ni tak perlulah So you need to look at into the uh, The date of the recognition Okay so based on this We have uh, Need to close debit Accumulated depreciation Okay, 66,500. Credit, disposal. 66,500. Okay, commonly when we put disposal, kita letak uh, jenis PPE lah. Sebab kalau ada banyak-banyak, dia akan jadi setiap uh, PPE that you going to write, recognize normally we use separate uh, disposal. Account. Okay, so you can see the accumulated depreciation account is already closed. Now we focus on disposal account. For disposal account, we already have uh, okay, we already have the PPE amount. We have accumulated depreciation amount. The third thing that you should include um. Uh, uh, you should put in your disposal account is the method of settlement. In this case, the method of settlement, you dispose the... Okay, in this uh, method of settlement, you sold for cash. Okay, so sold for cash, the journal entry, debit cash, sebab bila you jual, mesti dapat duit. Debit cash, credit disposal, the amount is 88000 500. Okay, so we don't show your, uh, our bank account here. So the journal entry will be debit, cash or bank. Duit yang you terima bila you jual, 88,000. Where do you credit? You going to credit your disposal account for, for cliff. Amount is 88,000. Okay, so it depend on your method of settlement. Okay, so we go back to our disposal account. So for disposal, we have uh, PPE, we have accumulated depreciation. In here, kita ada accumulated depreciation sebab PPE you adalah pada nilai cost. 153,500 is cost. Kalau uh, nilai yang you ada telah diberi pada carrying value, maknanya... Nombor dua ni tak adalah, tak perlu masuk lah accumulated depreciation sebab dia dah tolak pada uh, nilai PPE dalam bentuk carrying value. And then cash, uh, nombor tiga will be on the credit side. Sentiasa akan bagi berada on the credit side of your disposal. Sebab apa? Sebab bila you jual, you mesti dapat cash. Cash is a set. Okay, increase in a set, you debit your account. Then you come to a... Next item number four. Item number four can either be on the debit side, it can be on the credit side. So what is item number four? Item number four is the balancing or the missing figure uh, from the balancing of the account. So kalau you tengok, uh, compare debit and credit, you can see that... Okay, we have debit and credit. Okay, on the debit side, the amount is 153,300. On the credit side, sorry, uh, it's not uh, 8,500, it's 88,000 sahaja. Okay, so you can see from here that you have yang mana lebih banyak. Okay, you actually have a credit more than debit. So, we need to include the different in on the debit side. Okay, I just use formula. Okay, so what do you have there? Okay. Eh, sorry. Salah kira ni. 
Okay, one five eight three hundred. I'm sorry, you transfer to your disposal. One five eight three hundred. Okay, so when you have one five eight three hundred, you can see that it's not credit is more, it's debit that is more. Debit one five eight three hundred, credit only one five four five hundred. So the difference that you need to make it balance is on the credit side. So if you have on the credit side, it will represent loss on disposal. Okay. If you have the different on the debit side, you still transfer to statement of profit or loss, but in here you have gain on disposal. Okay, so dalam kes ni dia, uh, yang number 4 tu is either, salah satu saja, either gain or loss. Okay, yang item number 1, number 2, number 3, dia memang tetap, dia tak berubah dah. Uh, item nombor satu memang sebelah debit, item nombor dua dengan nombor tiga memang sebelah kredit but item nombor empat dia bergantung, dia boleh jadi debit, dia boleh jadi kredit bergantung pada baki you lah sama ada debit lagi banyak ataupun kredit lagi banyak. Okay, so normally when you do the recognition is better for you to scratch on your disposal account because kalau you pakai disposal, you akan lebih nampak uh, the process. Okay, so that is uh, the illustration on how do you do the recognition uh, of your asset. Okay, the recognition of your PPE. Okay, so once uh, the last part of it, okay, after you have done your the recognition, uh, uh, not not after you have done the re recognition, okay, the next point that you need to look at in MFRS one one six is how do we disclose our PPE in the financial statement. Okay, so if you are familiar with the preparation of financial statement, you will realize that for PPE, we have specifically need to prepare notes to property, plan and equipment. So you prepare all the details, cost minus accumulated depreciation showing the net book value in the notes to PPE. What do you show in your statement of financial Position adalah satu nilai sahaja that is PPE uh, the net total net book value. Okay, so with that we have complete uh, the second part of PPE and we have complete also the topic on property, plan and equipment. Okay, thank you very much. Have a nice day.